Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here and welcome back to another Cardano video. If this is the first time you're here, make sure you hit that subscribe button as this channel I have set up to be dedicated to Cardano to bring you all the latest information broken down into simple terms along with my usual tutorials and guides that I have previously been doing on my Trading with Paul channel which is still running and will be focused on the wider crypto community. So as well as that, if you're looking for a stake pool to delegate to, I do appreciate anyone who considers delegating to Cardano with Paul, with the ticker Paul, which is now up and running and open for delegation. And I am looking to run an extremely reliable and profitable pool for all of my delegators. So jumping into this video, the topic on this one is going to be talking about all the factors that come into play with a stake pool. So the fees that stakers have to pay, what's paid by the pool, what's paid by them, looking at other factors that influence how a stake pool operates then as well. So first off, I'm gonna talk about the fees, give a, an overview, a high level view of them, and then we'll jump onto my screen where we will look through some of the other factors that come into play. So you will have seen that there are two fees that go around the place so the fixed fee and the pool margin fee and some people don't actually stake because they're afraid of ending up with less cardano at the end than they started with but that is never the case these fees are taken off the total pool rewards and then what's left is split between the people who have delegated to that pool so the fixed fee is generally 340 as this is the minimum amount that is set out by the cardano community that can be charged on a fee on a pool per epoch basis so this can be more but the majority of pools do stick with 340. this all goes back to pay for the infrastructure that every pool operator has to have to make sure that they have the right servers they have the right networks and that their their architecture is up to scratch the next one that you see is the pool margin fee so actually we'll start off with the 340. So say a pool earns, let's keep these numbers very straightforward now, 1,340 is the rewards that a pool has earned in total for one epoch. What happens is that 340 is taken away from that, so that leaves 1,000 ADA to be split up between the delegators of that pool. Then the pool margin fee comes in. This is a fee that is set by the pool operator and can be set to whatever they want. Let's say with a 2% margin fee, what does this actually come into? So it's 2% of the 1000 ADA goes to the pool operator to help with the expense of running it and to fund anything else they are doing with the network. With me, I give my time to put out videos, blog posts, everything like that to try and help the community. So that 2% or whatever the fee is goes towards that. So when you take that 2% away from the 1000 the two percent is 20 ada so that leaves 980 ada which is then split up between the delegators of that stake pool so whoever has delegated their ada to that pool they earn a portion of the rewards based on the amount of ada they have delegated to the pool so now let's jump over to the screen and we will go through a few more things over there and give you some factors to consider Okay, so looking over on my screen here now, this is a link I will share down below. It is from the Cardano community GitHub. This is some of the factors that you need to consider as well when choosing a stake pool. So saturation level is one that needs to be considered and it is very topical right now because the announcement came out a few days ago that the K level is changing to 500. This means that it was previously 150. Well, it is 150 right now, but the beginning of December, it goes to 500. This is the number of pools that will get a reward in each epoch. So what's going to happen here is at the minute at the 150, the saturation level of a pool is well over 100 million. But when the K equals 500 comes into effect, this saturation level comes down to 64 million. So that means that any pool that has more than 64 million in it is going to earn less rewards. So everyone earns less rewards at the end of the day. So you need to keep an eye on the pool you're in and make sure it is under that 64 million threshold. There are other things there to consider. I will talk through them with examples actually on screen here. So the two sites that I use are adapools.org, really good site, and as well as that, 
pooltool.io. So we'll stick with pool tool just for this one. So on the left, you have the stake pool information, the ticker, the name, and the ID. So with some services, you might need the ID to stake and some you can do it by the ticker. The epoch fees, which we talked about is the 340. Again, as you can see, it's basically 340 for everyone. The variable fee then, or margin pool fee, this here ranges from, there's a 0% there and there is a 100%. Now the 100% are different, they're eToro, they don't want anyone else staking, they want all the rewards. Make sure you don't delegate to a 100% fee pool because it means that you will earn nothing. So we said 13 is the highest of the normal pools here. And as I explained, this is the fee that goes to the pool operator, again, to help with anything they're building for the community or to help pay for the infrastructure they have. Declared pledge then, this is the amount that the stake pool operator has put up front into a wallet when the pool was being created. So again, this is them helping grow the number of ADA in that pool to get better rewards. There is a level where, or there is a parameter where the amount pledged has an impact on the rewards that a pool generates. So if you have a really small pledge, then you potentially will earn slightly less rewards. Now there is a calculator that I'll show you that you can go through and you can have a play with it as well. Again, I'll leave the links to it down below. But in general, I've went with 100,000 ADA to start with. I may bring this up. That end figure, that parameter that affects the returns, it's not that big of a factor right now. It may be in the future when we get more pools involved and if it is, I will reassess and add more then because I want people who delegate to my pool to get the maximum return possible. Epoch return, so this is what they have returned annualized on this particular epoch. Active stake and live stake, so these two figures, the difference in these is the active stake is what was active in this uh, this pool when the lottery was done to decide what blocks would be given to each pool for this epoch. So this was at the start of the current epoch. This is the number they had in that pool. So then live is what it is right now. So if you go and you look up that pool, this is how much is in that pool right now. So the numbers always go up and down. So some people are adding pledge, some are taken away. Like these pools here, a lot of people in these pools need to get their funds out of there and into other pools or else they are going to be earning a lot less rewards. So then the lifetime return on stake. So this is over the lifetime, what kind of rewards you will be averaging if you were in this pool and then the lifetime blocks these pools have produced. So on top of all of these, you need to consider the stake pool operator is it someone you trust? Are they just spun up overnight and they could potentially disappear? So consider who they are. Can you look them up? Um, are they giving back to the community? Are they giving anything out? For me, I do it with my videos, my blogs. I'm active in Telegram trying to help people. So for me, that's the way I try and give back. Actually, my fee, can't remember if I mentioned it, I've set mine at 2.5%, which is somewhere in the middle. Again, people on 0%, you just have to be careful on that as well in the 0% pools that making sure they don't cut corners on the infrastructure they provide, that they are providing enough of an infrastructure to produce blocks and give you a return for each epoch that you are with them. So on that, the percentage doesn't play as big a difference as you would think. I'll show you that in a minute. So this is a calculator I'll link down below. So we're gonna say a stake of 10,000. The 340 is broken into 68 per day. At the stake pool operator, it's set at 100. I'm gonna leave that, that's what I have in mind. The total amount in the stake pool is 10 million, 10 million here in this example, which down the bottom then you see it gives a delegation of just under 5% for the year rewards which is where you're looking for or even slightly above it. So on a 5% pool fee, you would get 481 rewards over the year. So you would get 481 ADA over the year. If I change this pool fee to a 3%, you get 491. So you only get 10 more ADA for that. So it's not a huge amount to the person staking, but to the actual pool operators, when this is done over a bigger scale, 
this can be a bigger difference in helping support whatever they're trying to do within the community. Like that, if you come down to the 1%, you're still only, you if you're in a 5% versus a 1%, you have 20 extra ADA over the year. So what you need to consider is if you are in the higher pool, are you happy to contribute that small amount of ADA to them to help with the work they're doing? So I hope this has been a help, guys. I will leave the links that I mentioned down below. Anyone looking for a pool to delegate to, then I do appreciate all consideration given to my own pool. Cardano with Paul with the ticker Paul. And any questions at all, let me know below. Give the video a like, share. And again, don't forget to hit subscribe. I will talk to you guys very soon. Thanks for watching.